Hello students, hope you are doing safe with best of your health. This is my second lecture video on the chapter Principles of Inheritance and Variation. In the previous session, we have discussed about Mendelism. Today, we are going to discuss other contributions that happened in the field of genetics after Mendel. Students, by now you all know, according to Mendel, that the, if the character has to come from the parent to the offspring, it follows a particular ratio, that is the monohybrid and the dihybrid ratio. But what happened when the other scientists took up the same topic, that is the inheritance pattern with other organisms they studied, and when they took up this particular inheritance pattern studies, they surprisingly got to know that the inheritance pattern was not the same, that is the ratios were coming different. So those inheritance pattern where the ratios were coming different other than the Mendel, we call them as deviations from Mendelian principles or we also call them as post-Mendelian inheritance. Post-Mendelian inheritance is that which will not follow the Mendelian monohybrid and dihybrid cross ratios. Um, under that we have a topic called gene interactions. Students until now what we have studied is there is a particular gene, a single gene, a single gene will be having two alleles and these two alleles will correspond to one particular character. Uh, but what happens is consider we have three genes here. This is gene 1, this is gene 2 and this is gene 3. In the first gene we have two alleles that is capital A and the capital A. In the second gene we have capital B and the small b. In the third gene we have the small c and small c. Students, this since both of them are capital, it is a homozygous dominant one. Since this both of them are small, this is a homozygous recessive one. Whereas here, since this is a heterozygous one, one is capital, the other one is small. What happens is the dominant one will express, the other recessive one will get suppressed without expressing. This is what we have studied in the Mendelian principle. But what happens here is, at times, these two alleles, the capital B and the small b, will interact together instead of this capital B expressing, uh, both of them together correspond and give another character here. Either of which capital B also will not express completely, even the small b will also not express completely. Both of them interact together and they express and they give another character. This kind of interaction wherein in a single gene, so this is a single gene, the, the B gene here, this gene, these two alleles interact and they give some different character here. Such interactions we call it as allelic interaction. Allelic interaction happens within the same gene. So we call them as intragenic interaction. Intragenic is in a single gene, we have two alleles these two alleles instead of giving their own character they together mingle and they give another character here this is intragenic or allelic interaction in the other case we have as non allelic interaction or intergenic interaction that is uh, consider we have this first gene right here a gene is having the two alleles and again the other one c is also having the c alleles here this allele from this gene and probably from this gene, this allele, the small c will interact and either of A character also will not come and the C character will also not come. They both interact and they give another new character here. So such interactions that happens between the genes also comes under gene interaction and that we term it as intergenic interaction. In intergenic interaction, the alleles of two different genes interact and they give us the character. In intragenic interaction, alleles of a same gene interact together and they give a character. The definition goes here. Gene interaction involves effect of alleles and non-alleles on the normal phenotypic expression of the gene. Normally, a gene has to give a particular character, right? A particular phenotypic character has to be given from a gene. But what happened is the alleles that were there in this particular gene, they started interacting. They did not give this particular character. They gave some other different character. So that is what we study under this heading called gene interactions. Taking up the first one, allelic interaction. I have told you allelic interaction happens between the same gene which are present at same locus. That is, we have a gene the alleles are exactly on the same gene here, they interact and they correspond to some other character which was not being told by Mendel. So under that we have other five concepts here which follow the allelic interaction that is incomplete dominance, co-dominance, multiple alleles, lethal gene and pleiotropic gene. The very first one I will take 
that is incomplete dominance now students understand here this uh, two arrow marks in the first what we have given here this corresponds for law of dominance according to the law of dominance we have two alleles here the among the two alleles the one which is getting expressed completely we call it as a dominant one and the other one which is not expressing we call it as a recessive one isn't it this is what we have seen in mentalism but what happens in incomplete dominance is in incomplete dominance this gene this allele which was supposed to express completely until here will not express until here instead it will express only half of it or partially it will express itself since it's partially expressing it also partially suppresses the recessive allele and there is an expression of this recessive allele also in the half this kind of uh, incomplete or partial dominance is seen in certain organisms that we study under incomplete dominance here in the other one see students we have a gene here and we have a b gene here a gene and b gene among them any one was supposed to express but what happens here is uh, a gene also completely expresses and the b gene also completely expresses which are lying on the same locus so these since these two alleles are getting expressed we call it as co-dominance until now what we have studied is each gene has only two alleles they have to correspond to a particular character so in multiple alleles what happens is there are some alleles which play role other than the two alleles more than two alleles play role that is extra alleles we have denoted here more alleles correspond to one particular character among them either this and this may go or this and this may go any of the alleles will be selected and they correspond to a particular character such type of interaction we call it as multiple allelic interaction there are certain other genes what we call them as lethal genes students lethal means death lethal means death at times what happens when the interactions happen between the genes some genes correspond if they completely express the particular organism in which the gene is expressing the organism may die so such genes which corresponds to the death of an organism we call it as lethal gene we have another example called pleiotropic gene in pleiotropic gene what happens uh, a single gene has a potentiality to correspond to more than one character see here one particular gene is here there and one particular gene if this is expressing it can induce three different characters here in this picture so until now we have studied is one gene has to give one character with the help of two alleles but in pleiotropic gene one single gene can give rise to many such characters so today we'll be taking a topic the very first one incomplete dominance and we'll be studying in detail under the incomplete dominance as i told you until now we have this until now what we believed is according to law of dominance one has to express completely so that the other one will get suppressed and that won't be expressing in the hybrid that is in the heterozygote condition the dominant one will express completely the other one the recessive one will not be expressing but here what happens is the dominant one instead of it expressing completely it ex just just expresses partially and the recessive allele also tries to express partially both of their half interaction what is their half expression what is there that corresponds to some other new character that is what we study under incomplete dominance under this we have three examples here flower color in mirabilis jalapa we have flower color in antirinum majus and also we have the feather color in andalusian fox these three examples will be studying today so very first one flower color in mirabilis jalapa students remember Mirabilis jalapa flower is also known as four o'clock flower. The plant Mirabilis jalapa is also called as four o'clock plant. This particular flower will be blooming at four o'clock. That is why the name four o'clock plant it is. Incomplete dominance was first studied by Mr. Carl Correns in 1903 in this particular plant Mirabilis jalapa. What happens is students uh, in the mirabilis jalapa there are two particular there are so many variants of colors not only the pink there are so many variants of color we have uh, the among them the dominant one is the red color and the recessive one is the white color look at here we have taken a dominant uh, one here the red one and the recessive one the white here we are uh, that is mr carl corans has taken the red color flowers and he has also taken the white color flowers when they are crossing with each other 
may, uh, what Karl Korans was expecting is the alleles will uh, get inherited among them and the R and the W will be inherited among them R being the dominant this has to give red colored flowers since it is from the dominant parent but what happened here is there is a blending of two alleles happening here that is even little bit of red is also expressed little bit of white is also expressed and in the F1 surprisingly Karl Korens saw pink colored flowers since he saw pink colored flowers uh, this is not following the Mendelian principle. Here it was uh, supposed to be the red color flower. So still he did not stop. He went further for the selfing process wherein he took uh, the pink color flower and another pink color flower that is another RW he took and when he crossed it he found out in the F2 generation one was the red color flower the other two were the pink color flower and the other one was white color flower. Students, you have to remember, according to Mendel, in the monohybrid cross, we were expecting 3 is to 1 ratio. 3 were supposed to be red here since it is a dominant parent and 1 was supposed to be white here since it is a recessive parent. But what happened here is 3 instead of being red, here they got split into 1 is to 2. That is, one particular plant was red in color other two were pink in color and other one was white in color so the phenotypic ratio the phenotypic ratio of this incomplete dominance is 1 is to 2 is to 1 also when you see the particular gene arrangement also capital R capital R was only one plant capital R and capital W were two plants and the capital W and capital W plants were only one plant so the genotypic ratio was also the same that is 1 is to 2 is to 1 this was not supposed to happen according to the Mendelian principle Mendelian principle said the phenotypic ratio should be 3 is to 1 the genotypic ratio should be 1 is to 2 is to 1 but here both phenotypic and with the genotypic ratio both of them are 1 is to 2 is to 1 this is the first example that is flower color in Mirabilis Jalapa in the second example that is flower color in anterenum majus anterenum majus students remember anterenum majus in india is famously called as dog flower and in other parts of the world it is also called as snap dragon flower it is also called as snap dragon flower even in this plant the same kind of interactions happen this is the flower that is shown here this is the anterenum majus flower according to uh, the incomplete dominance what happens here is when the red color flower is crossed with a white color flower here also we were expecting the red flower uh, to be uh, coming in the f1 generation but for uh, but surprisingly in the f1 generation all the plants that were there that were were pink in color there is a capital r and a small r you could see here here instead of r completely expressing the capital r is partially expressing and we are getting the pink color flower and when this pink color flower was subjected to self crossing we have got this particular ratio again that is 1 is to 2 is to 1 that is red was 1 pink were 2 and again white was 1 so again both phenotypic and the genotypic ratios remain the same that is 1 is to 2 is to 1 both the mirabilis jarapa flower and the anterior majus flower uh, shows a similar pattern because even they have the red and the white flowers and pink flowers was the surprising content what uh, Karl Korans has shown the same thing happens even in the anterior images so we have straight with two examples we also have another example that is feather color in Andalusian folds Andalusian folds folds means the chickens and the ducks and all those what we can eat the birds we call them as folds Andalusia Andalusia is a place that is seen uh, that is uh, somewhere in Spain so the Andalusian fowls are the fowls who are indigenous to Andalusia that is the Spain country it belongs to so these Andalusian fowls look like this you can see the picture here Andalusian fowls look like this among them the black one is the dominant one the black color chicken when the black color chicken was crossed with the white color chicken again if we were we were expecting the black color chicken to be coming in the f1 generation but instead of that black color chicken coming not even the white came but the blue chicken came here that is the black and the blue got blended their uh, expression was not complete the partial expression of the genes happened and the mixing of colors happened and then the f1 generation was surprisingly blue in color 
and when this again blue colored andalusian falls when they were crossed again they got four offsprings among them one was black and two were blue in color and one was white in color here also the phenotypic and with the genotypic ratio remain the same that is one is two two is two one that is one was black two were blue and one was again white so this particular ratio one is two two is two one is the same for both phenotypic and genotypic ratio in all the incomplete dominance organ whoever whichever organisms who follow the incomplete dominance among them the ratio will be the same that is 1 is to 2 is to 1 in the next video we'll be discussing about the co-dominance thank you